Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs>
So, so you should jump in and say hi to a few people, and then we'll start talking some details on insurance, and then we'll do some Q and A on insurance. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Let's Bruce and Tawny were the first lucky ones to be on today. Yes, and I was very jealous when I read your post. Welcome, hello from the outer banks of North Carolina, enjoying some fabulous seafood. Mm, my favorite meal, and. Nice weather and time on the beach. I hope you guys are having a great time. Huh. Yeah. No, no meatloaf, eh? <laughs> Lucky you. James and Kitty Cat are roasting in California. 94 degrees. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we had it nice and warm this um, weekend here. A little bit too much sun yesterday. So out cleaning the boat and I got too much sun. But yeah. For us, for us, warm is 75 degrees. But 20 degrees less than what's in California <laughs> yeah, right now. That's downright hot. What that is. <laughs> <laughs> so and comment about cruise line insurance. Yeah. Uh, well, We'll touch on that because that's definitely one of the options and we've used that option. So, yeah. I think oh, we... You didn't. Oh, the, yeah. Getting the cruise. Sorry. Yeah. I was reading half the comment. Yeah. And Bruce and Tawny. We also pr purchase uh, multi, sorry, I'm trying to read the right spot. Multi-travel insurance and use a credit card that includes trip interrupt insurance for trips that we purchased with it. Yeah. Yeah. We've done that too. And that's another strategy. So we got two strategies now already and we yeah. haven't got into it. So we've yeah. got cool. buy it from the cruise line. And we've got use your travel credit card. Yes. And again, we've done both of those. So we have a little bit of insight. And we've used them. Yeah. We've, in different ways. Yeah. We've actually had to put claims in. So we have a little bit of experience yeah, with that. a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Dave is here. Good evening. Crown Royal Abusers. That's your nickname now. <laughs> <laughs> and Dave is from across the other side of the Atlantic. Question for Jill and Jerry. Have you heard oh, the announcement of the brand up. new princess ship? called the star wow she's going to be the best ship on the ocean we're quite excited about this new line of of uh cruises that princess is building right now because they're very large ships and as most of you know we're not a huge fan of a, what we would consider a very big mega ship but i'm being told that they don't hold the 6,000, 7,000 people that some of the other ships the same size do. They're only going to well, have around 4,000? Yeah, it's a very similar footprint to the other big LNG ships that have come out. You know, the Mardi Gras and the Celebration and P&O has uh, Iona. And uh, there's another one out there, MSC maybe. That, uh, but there's there's a lot of these big ships coming out. But they are putting many more people on them than Princess. Like, you know, Carnival's Mardi Gras yeah. is five to 6,500 people. Whereas Princess is saying the Sun and Star are going to be just over 4,000 people. So that really impresses us because that means there should be more ship for all of us to enjoy and not be crowded. We're hoping. Fingers crossed. We'll have to wait and see. And we've seen some of the pictures that have been shown already of some concepts about how the open spaces are going to look. And it looks huge and marvelous and, and very airy. So that'll be wonderful if we can, get a, we can get a small ship experience on a bigger platform. And they're talking about, what, 20 some odd restaurants and pubs on this new... Wow. Yeah, compared to, you know, the half dozen that might be on the other ships. You couldn't go there on a seven-day cruise. You wouldn't see it all then, if that's the case. <laughs> the pub crawl will be a killer, but yeah. we'll, we'll try it. <laughs> no, no. Oh, oh, wow. And Dave has his weekly question for you. Oh, yeah. He's hoping you'll change your answer. Yeah, still not coming on that <laughs> ship. We will be on a ship that same time, but not not the princess, even though we do love the Sky Princess. Yes, yeah. yeah we are going to be on MSC for the first time that week. Yeah. And Wanda and Paul are here saying Happy Mother's Day. Hi, Happy Mother's Day. And Oregon Coast is here next. Oh, 95 degrees and he's melting. <laughs> Typically don't get that weather here. Wow. Humidity is off the charts. Oh, no. And let's talk insurance. The humidity is worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Greg, yeah, he wants to talk about credit card insurance specifically. Uh -huh. And we'll go a few more hellos and then we'll start talking insurance here. Chad and Matthew are Hi, here. Hi, guys. Hello. Hope you're doing well. Yep. And exploring with Drew is here from Winnipeg. Winnipeg, yeah. Yeah, and Winnipeg, I think, had some warm, dry weather like us is too. Hmm. I should be paying attention. Ontario girls here. Good evening. Mother's Day. Dave saying Mother's Day as well. And Greg is talking about the Olive Garden. Yeah, there we he go. He says he loves the Olive Garden. Good. See, so, I'm not the only one. That uh, that salad with those little peppers in them. Oh, that's the best thing going. Is the, mm. and, and the bread. The breadsticks are pretty good. Yeah. And I love their minestrone soup. So yeah, we're we're fans of Olive Garden. And there's yeah, that's the comment you're talking about from Drew there with the uh, yeah. Winnipeg but there's Olive them. Gardens in Winnipeg. That's probably the closest <laughs> Olive Garden to us. Like, no. They have them in Traverse City. It'd be closer to Traverse City. Uh, Warren Wolf is happy Mother's Day. And Sun Deck 2007 is here from Waterloo, Ontario. Hello. 
And uh, a whole bunch of Mother's Days. Chris is here. I think Explore with Drew is saying excellent, too. I think our boat going in the water. Oh. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> we'll take that one. Mm -hmm. And Joe is saying that's one big boat. <laughs> it looks a lot bigger out of the water than in the yeah, water. Yeah, <laughs> once you get it in the water, it doesn't look so big. But, yeah. You know. It's a, it's a fine size. It's a good size. Joe wants to know fiberglass really needs to be waxed. Yes. Yes, because fiberglass, believe it or not, it'll collect a lot of mold. It'll start to discolor and Black take marks. It'll on take it. stains from water run water running. Well, water marks, I guess I'm looking for. I wish the answer was no, because trust me, the hardest part about getting this boat summer ready is is the waxing of it. And it seems like no matter how many times we've waxed it. You never can get it perfectly waxed. I don't know. It's Chris, my <laughs> Chris wants to know whether you've ever taken your boat down to the Wyerton Oliphant area. We have not taken it that far, no. No, we haven't. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Our boat actually originally, when it was new, started its its life in Lake Simcoe. Yeah. So if you know where that is, that's down towards Barrie, Southern Ontario. So mm -hmm. it's kind of been in that area before. We've never had it there. And then it went to Michigan. It was owned by an American for. Quite a few years. And Jaslyn is here, and she is back from a cruise on Holland America's Zondam. Yeah, Zondam. An incident cost three thousand in the infirmary, Whew. And, and she had insurance. It sounds like so. There, oh yeah. wow! So hopefully we'll find there it a little go. bit more there. Yeah, for sure. And some people saying hello. <gasps> and Peter's here Hi, with, Peter. from England. Yeah, late there as well. What do we have after midnight there? Oh, uh, Explore with Drew wants us to talk about airline cancellation camp. insurance. We'll try. It's Everybody's so different with all that with the airlines, but we'll try. And some hello from Waterloo. We've got a couple of people while they should all get together to pub and watch us and put us on the big screen in the pub. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. <laughs> if they do that or not for That'd us. That would be awful. <laughs> Sunshine Coast in BC. I hope you guys all watch us on a little tiny, like, um, iPhone or something, because I was at my in-laws, and they had us up on their big TV, and I'm like, oh, no. That was way too much of us. If you're watching so I hope you watch us all on a very tiny screen, please. <laughs> If you, yeah, if you're watching us on the big screen, you see that we've got a little bit of a tan after our work on the oh, boat. Yes. Well, my face doesn't. I had good protection on my face. It was my arms and shoulders. I wasn't so vigilant about protecting from the sun. So a couple more hellos from Brian and Terry and Georgia as well from Jason going on Holland America Rotterdam cruise in the Caribbean before Christmas. Oh, nice. So yeah, tips and tricks, ideas for our videos. It's good to hear that you're finding some. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. Find out, you find out where all the bars are then, for sure. We love the Rotterdam bars. <laughs> Twenty eight. Get there early is the trick for the for the half moon bar on the Rotterdam. Yeah. Claire is saying twenty eight degrees, and for the Americans in the house, we're talking closer to about eighty five. Mm -hmm. And uh, Peter's doing a repositioning cruise on Princess Seven Days at Sea for unusual ports, and it was cheap. Oh, nice. That's the way to book them. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Kelly and Steve are here saying hello Hi to everybody. Guys. I believe if memory serves, they're going on a cruise to Alaska really, really, really soon. Next week, I believe. Next week, yes. yeah. So that, they, they must be excited. Busy packing. Yeah. <laughs> and Dave's talking about Barclays Bank travel insurance. Definitely sounds like a British thing to me. I don't know for sure because that's not a Canadian thing. Yeah, I'd pay 30 pounds a month to have it. It also includes car breakdown. Wow. Nice. Let's, yeah, let's yeah. Know what we pay a day. So England has a really good insurance <laughs> plan if you happen to be from the UK. Yeah, and questions. So we got a few questions about the credit card insurance. Maybe we'll start talking about insurance at this point okay. before we start to skip, skip too many there. I do see that Stacy's the next thing saying that she's just back from the seaside. Had a great time. So hopefully we'll be able to talk to Stacy at oh, some point too, or good. maybe we'll, we'll talk to her on our Facebook group and see how that went on the seaside. Yeah. But let's talk about, I'll take that comment off. I'll throw this one on. We have technology working vacation insurance. There we go. I just, you haven't scrolled up there. <laughs> okay. Sorry. I'm just trying to get him to do all the tech stuff. We're uh, almost there. Okay. Vacation insurance. First of all, when we were young, maybe a little bit foolish and invincible. Because when you're young, you can do anything and nothing's going to hurt you. You see and you think. We hardly had any insurance. Like we kind of did eventually through work. I was just going to say, so here, before we get too deep into the conversation, insurance also changes depending on where you live. So your province or your state, your country you live and what your work benefits are. I, we currently have, you know, some travel insurance that comes with our personal work uh, plans. Anyways, that all changes. So 
what we say is what we experience in our life, but it may not be available where you live. Yeah. Right? And we're certainly not experts. So don't take what we say and go buy something without talking to we the people no selling idea. it. Yeah. So make sure you talk to the insurance reps about making sure you're getting what you need for sure. And hopefully we'll talk today about what you need or what the strategies are. Basically, when we talk vacation insurance, we're talking about two different types of insurance. We are talking about travel insurance, and that's that, you know, cancellation of your trip for whatever reason, you know, you lose your luggage, you know, you have an unexpected something changes in your plans that costs you money. Yeah. That's travel insurance. And then there's health insurance. So you're going to new different places that are outside of where your normal residency is and you need additional health coverage. You know, we're in that situation. And so you need to buy health. And a lot of times they're grouped together as travel or vacation insurance and what they, they kind of cover everything kind of a comprehensive plan. Right. So let's just say what we currently do and we can go from there. So yep. currently what we do is we do have work insurance that covers us for three weeks uh, a year. So that obviously doesn't cover us all the time. So that's a little bit. Then we have to buy supplemental insurance. So we do have travel credit cards that have a lot of insurance we buy into a credit card that has been working very well for us and we've actually had to use it we used it um years ago when we there was a little incident with a rental car that it got uh, damaged while it was in a parking lot twice oh that's true it did happen we, twice. We've and that's one of the advantages of using the credit card so you're kind of jumping around a little bit yeah. but with the credit card the if you rent a rental car with the travel card that has the insurance on it, then the insurance on the credit card will cover anything. So we had a couple, both were very similar, both kind of little fender benders that that were you know cosmetic in nature, yeah. but it was enough that the rental company said, hey, this needs to be repaired. We gave them our insurance, our, our credit card information, and that's the last we ever heard of it. Our credit card company handled it all. Looked after it all. We did, never did anything from that point on. So whatever they worked out with the rental car company happened and it cost us nothing from that yeah, point on. So, yeah. so that, that's the, the credit card does work very seamless in our experience. And also credit cards, I guess the other experience we've had too is we've had friends and family that have used it for getting money back on a cruise when COVID cancellations were happening and they were all over the place. And some people, especially in Canada, it was kind of got messy for a while getting any refunds or credits or some people wanted their money back. So some credit cards stepped up in that situation. Yeah. Again, that was very you know, all over the place, but really not an issue this day and age now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's our situation. Now we've also at times, so we we have the credit card insurance. We currently have it right now. In fact, we have two different credit cards with have insurance on it. So we're kind of double insured plus works. So mm -hmm. We're we're kind of triple insured, but we've also bought the boat insurance. There's, there's cruise line insurance that you can buy. Yes, through the cruise company. Yeah, and I, I guess the reason we did that was because of COVID. Because when we went back after COVID, it was very messy. Plus, we were traveling outside of Canada. We weren't supposed to go on cruise ships, according to the government. So our, our own local health plans were null and void if we went on a cruise. Yeah. So our work plans did not cover any COVID insurance when we started cruising. And there was still, um, yeah. yeah. So we had to get supplemental insurance on. Yeah. And so... I just see some questions come in. We'll jump. We'll get to the questions in just a second there. So yeah, that's the credit card piece, and then the cruise piece, and then there's also the buy private insurance option. So so if you don't have a work, you don't have a travel credit card, and you're not going to buy it from the cruise line. The last option, I think, if I don't have missed any, is you buy it from a private company, like here in Canada, for example. You buy it from someone like Manulife, for example. You can buy whatever type of comprehensive insurance you want. You can get the bare bones for health. You can get the travel included. You can get a, a rider that has COVID stuff on it as well. And you can buy that as well for the time that you're out of the country traveling. Right. So that's your last option. And we've also done that because when we went away <laughs> right after the, the cruise pause, and we actually bought that insurance along with the ship's insurance because we thought whatever happens, we're going to be covered and we're, we don't want to be in a bad spot. So yeah, we were overinsured for sure. We definitely were, but it gave us peace of mind. Um, so yes. you, that can't be, uh, and you know. And that was kind Not of, about I, I guess when I started by saying when we were young, we weren't too worried about travel insurance. When you get older, it becomes more of a deal. I think we can kind of relate with that. And we are very fortunate, though. You guys know how many cruises we've been on. And I need to knock on wood as I say this. Neither one of us has ever had to go to the infirmary and deal with a medical issue while we've been on a cruise. So we're very thankful for that. Um, but again, like Jerry said, as we age, we think that that possibility will happen someday yep. hopefully not so a couple more things come to mind 
credit card insurance usually has a limited number of days it covers you for, sometimes two weeks, sometimes three weeks. I think one of our new cards has got two weeks. So we're going away to Europe for 22 days, as you know. So we're going to be looking, You can a lot of times you can call the, the credit card company and they will extend it for a small fee. Yeah. Usually it's very reasonable. So mm -hmm. that's an option if you're using the credit card route. Yeah. One problem with the credit card route, we're finding now that we're booking a little more exotic cruises, is some cruise lines like Morella that are British, they want proof of insurance which is something we've never seen getting on a normal North American cruise. We've never been asked for it except for once COVID hit you, that we were asked for it. But yeah. even post COVID restrictions now, there are some cruise lines that are still asking for proof of insurance. So, yeah. So we're looking at, you know, buying private insurance possibly that actually, because they, what they want is they want to see your name. They want to see an insurance policy and that you've got coverage for whatever the situation is. And a lot of times that's really hard to get with your credit card plan because it's all generic for all card holders. But there's no plan that says your name. Now, I've heard some people have been able to call the credit card company and get a personalized you know, voucher saying that they're covered. So if you call your credit card company, you might be able to get that. Okay. But that's that's that complication right there. Hmm. So I guess the last thing I'll say before we go to the questions is a lot of people have questions about the health piece and pre-existing because that's a big one. We hear that all the time. Yeah. And that scares everybody. If, they're gonna, yeah. if I had a medical condition, you know, and I, that happens away, then I don't have any coverage, right? That's not necessarily the case. It really depends on your age. As you age, it becomes more difficult for them to waive conditions. The younger you are, the more you can get away with things. You know, if you have a minor condition, you know, a good example is blood pressure. I was reading about just before we went live and you uh, are taking medication for it. You've had it for many years. You're following the rules. You are tested regularly for your, your blood pressure. Then that's not really considered a pre-existing condition if you're under 60. And every insurance company deals with this differently. So the one I looked at was Manulife. So so check with your insurance company. But the rule of thumb, what I was reading is that you should declare all pre-existing conditions if you have any, even something like a food allergy. I never thought of that, but some of the food allergies should probably declare it as well as what I was reading. Oh, really? Yeah. And now they won't, it's not necessarily that they will deny you if a pre-existing and it's not saying that they won't cover you if something happens that's related to that. It just means they might charge you more or they might just say it's fine. That's all part of the package, right. but it's always good to declare it if you're concerned about it. Mm -hmm. So, but, it, and if you have an unstable medical condition in any situation, they're not going to cover you regardless. It's, if the doctor says you shouldn't travel and your medical condition is not stable, then that's going to be a no go regardless is, is what I'm learning. So. Right. So that's what we know. So maybe we'll take some questions and see if some other people have some feedback and some questions right. or comments that we haven't thought of here. Okay. So uh, where do we leave off? Um, Barclays? I think right at Wanda and Paul. That's where you were. Oh, okay. Yes, Wanda and Paul. And go back to the comments over here. And looking for Wanda and Paul. You can maybe read it up there before I get up there. All right. So her question was, does your credit card insurance only work if you pay the entire cruise cost all at once? So if you pay the deposit mm -hmm. and then pay the balance? I believe like when we were looking in the fine print of this, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's you do have to make sure that it's paid with the credit card. Yeah, but I would check with that. Mm -hmm. Because it might vary from cards to cards, so I don't think there's a blanket answer to that one. We can say yeah, yes or no to. No, we definitely are. Our understanding, sure. my understanding, has always been that it works like that. But I don't believe it has to be paid all at once. As long as the entire, if you put a deposit on the credit card and then you pay the rest, then it covers it. It might also. So one of the things with insurance is if you pay for your insurance at the moment you book and put a deposit down, you're eligible for what's called cancel for any reason with some insurance plans. If you don't book your insurance until you've made your final payment, a lot of times you can't do that because at that point, then you have to pay it up front. You really need to know the fine print yes. of your credit card because, I mean, when we got the little booklet, I read every single page and every little thing because it matters to us because we travel so much uh, because every credit card is different. So we own, we have two different travel credit cards and there's differences in both. And I sort of went through and sort of marked off the differences so we could learn what one was best to what we book. So we tend to use one that we book our big expensive stuff and then another one just for like a hotel or a rental car or something. And I guess to break down one in Paul's comment here very precisely, I guess, is if you pay a deposit with it and something happened that you couldn't make the cruise and you're going to lose your deposit, you might get that back from the credit card. And then if you've already paid everything in full, using the credit card for the deposit and the full payment, then you would probably also be eligible for some sort of reimbursement, depending on what it is. Like they, some of them, some of them have to be 
you know, something very serious, like a personal illness that you can't travel or a death in the media family and that type of things that there are conditions that you can get money back. Yeah. But as far as like the travel insurance part, where it's, you know, luggage and all that stuff, travel delay, stuff like that, that I think if you pay for the whole thing on the credit card, all those things usually work. Mm -hmm. And I think the health stuff also works while you're on the trip. So you don't have to pay all at once, like all, all up front, for example. But if the whole thing's paid on your credit card, I think that's what, what triggers it. Yes. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. But I would check with that because because yeah, because we've assumed that, but maybe all these years we've been putting on our credit card, we didn't need to. But it only makes sense to me that that would be the way it works. Yeah. Right. Um, Chad and Matthew, just this isn't a uh, <laughs> this isn't an insurance question. They're just reminding Mrs. Canuck that she's on a forty-three inch TV right now in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. There. <laughs> I think we should put a limit of like nineteen inches or something. <laughs> James and Kimmy Cat, same things. They're same watching you in a big, big one. <laughs> Guys, uh, I'll stand further back. <laughs> um, back. Non-insurance question. I'll hit it real fast. Twyla wants to know question in the retreat cabana port starboard forward or aft. Uh, that's a question we debated a lot after our first time looking at Mr. Canuck likes to be uh, right in the middle of it. And I like to be off on one of the sides. <laughs> Yeah, it feels like the sides are a little quieter, and, so, and the sides also usually have shade, more shade at some part of the day, where the, the forward ones are often sunnier more for a yeah. longer time. Yeah, so if we're talking uh, the Pinnacle Class Cabanas, if that's what you're referring to, um, my opinion is that they should be starboard side. That's my favorite side to be. How about you? What's your favorite spot on them? I don't know. I like starboard. Sorry. Go say what you're going to say. Nope. I was just going to give my reason. I like the starboard side because it is the quietest area because everybody comes in on the port side into that area. Um, so you're further away from the bathrooms and the traffic is just a little bit quieter, a little bit more uh, peaceful. And mm. you get a nice breeze. That's interesting. Good. Yeah. yeah. I like being kind of like front center. If there's a hot tub in the retreat cabana. Like there is on the new Staten Dome. You want to be by all because I can jump in the hot tub, be near all the action, and that all the cabana stewards are right there working behind me. That I can kind of wave and say, "Hey, Mr. Jerry, what do you want?" And I just, yeah. So I'm right there in the middle of it all, talking to everybody. Oh, as if <laughs> that's not him. That's generally me. I'm the one talking to everybody. Looking out over the jogging track, imagining that I was hitting that and doing laps, pretending to be <laughs> exercising while we're laying there being lazy. So, oh. Anyways, back to your questions on insurance. Oh, sorry. I just was. I saw oh. Discovery Princess Alaska last week. So, oh, nice. Steve, Steve. had a good time. Yeah. Kelly's confirming that they're going away and she's packing, repacking for Alaska. Oh, taking out your downfield jacket. It's too hot for that. Oh, good to know because I've been thinking I need to find one for that. Mm -hmm. And Dee's here just back from the Celebrity Equinox. Oh, hi, Dee. Huh. Deanna Rob. I hope you That's, guys had a great time. Yeah, nine days. Yeah. We were uh -huh. talking about them. that class of ship we'd be curious about too. Yeah. We'll have to talk more. We were talking about that with them when they were on the Sky Princess with us. Um, Question with insurance. I'm down there with Peter. I understand that the clinics on the cruise ship do not take insurance. You have to pay and then claim back. Mm -hmm. We had friends that went to the clinic on board, and that is exactly what we heard it happened. That's true. She was given a bill. It was charged actually right onto her uh, ship account. Yep. And and then uh, she and uh, she had travel insurance with the cruise line. So, but she still had to put a claim in with the travel insurance yeah. through the cruise line. Yeah, we've have heard that. That uh, yeah, a lot of it is reimbursement after the fact. Now, if you are say having to be moved off the ship to a hospital on land, then usually your insurance package has like a number to call. If you're out of country, you call that number and they arrange what, yes. how the care is going to look. We've we've heard for Canadians, for example, that are visiting somewhere in the U.S. If it's not a very very serious that it's immediate need, they will actually pay to fly them back to Canada and get taken care of as opposed to be taken care of if it's something that doesn't need immediate treatment right yeah mm -hmm. but if it's obviously some you know something massive that needs to be done that it'll be taken care of but they say you should call that number before you are doing any treatment if at all in the process to make sure that the insurance company is aware of what's going on they open up a claim and start handling all this stuff for you so don't wait till you get home and then just surprise them and say hey i got a hundred thousand dollar bill here yeah they're going to want to be involved in the process <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh kelly has a question yes she's saying credit card insurance usually only for the primary credit card holder he's not oh, wow is that, a you know that? is that a question no, or a it statement? looks like a statement she must know it yeah um wow 
Now, I will have to check the fine print because I know I've been through some of our travel bees and, and it, it used to cover both of us and even our children when they were at home. Oh, that's true. So, so yeah. If our, we had paid for their trip. With yeah. the credit card, yeah. That's right. We did look at that. So, again, it might be different on different credit cards yeah. because we did have one. I remember specifically because we were wondering about our children. Um, and, yeah, it did cover them. Yeah, it did cover them, yeah. So, so yeah, that's something mm -hmm. to check on for sure. That it, Like I said, there's a lot of fine print and all this, but I, I would say the best way, if you have any questions, is literally call the companies up and ask them. Just... We, yeah, I've done that quite a few <laughs> yeah. times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Peter's, I think we already covered Peter's, right? Yeah. Yeah, so Dave is saying about diabetes, very important to declare insurance, either type 1 before you travel. And uh, yeah, so when I was reading about insurance, then yeah, I've heard that as well, that that's kind of a pre-existing. A lot of times it's not going to uh, stop you from getting coverage. It might not even increase the rate of your coverage, but they want to be aware. So, but usually if it's stable, you know, you're handling with medication or on a, a doctor's advice and you're taking that advice, that's a big one. If the doctor says that you have this kind of condition and you say, I'm not doing anything about that, then then that's not very good when it comes to pre-existing conditions. You have to be following medical advice, right? All right. And that would include diabetes, of course, yeah. yeah. And Peter's saying something about if you're in the UK and over 50. Sega Cruises has a great travel insurance, even if you have diabetes, heart issues, etc. Yep. as long as you tell them in advance. Yep. And a lot of the cruise lines, I would be very careful again with the cruise on insurance because there is usually conditions in there that aren't as broad as, you know, land-based insurance. Like some of the, I remember when we were on, I believe in Europe with Carnival, I believe we looked up their insurance. And the insurance covered for them to get you to shore to get treated. But once the treatment happened on shore, that wasn't Carnival's responsibility. That was your responsibility. Yeah. So their insurance and covered taking care of you on the ship and getting you from the ship to a better clinic if you need to. Yeah. But it didn't include all your coverage if you were on land and they had sailed away and you'd been left behind. So that's, right. so that's a factor to take it. Make sure when you book with the cruise line, you know what you're getting. Right. Yeah, for sure. Claire is saying make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Yes, guys. Yes. Thanks. And Greg is saying happy Mother's Day from San Francisco. San Francisco. Hi, Greg. Glad you could join us. We're taking two cruises within two months of each other. When you do that, do you always get insurance for both trips? So this is something new to us that we've just started to look into now as we're um, cruising more frequently. Is And I think somebody might have mentioned it in the comments. I don't think we got to it yet, though, is you can buy insurance that will cover you for travel insurance for a whole year. And so if you cruise frequently or travel frequently, sometimes it's a cheaper way to do it than just getting new insurance for each trip that you take. So yeah, that's what we're currently are personally looking into doing is just buying a plan that will cover us for the whole year if we need more than what our travel cards can give us. Yeah. So if you're online tonight and you do know about that, put some comments in the comment section because I know there is some people in our Facebook group for sure. And I thought some people that have been on here that do pay kind of a, a rate that covers them for a certain number of trips every year. Yeah. So you don't have to pay for it each trip. Ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I definitely would look into that. We haven't done that personally. But that's definitely something we've heard of. Yeah. Yeah. Thinking we're going to be doing it soon. Mm -hmm. And Steve says you're on a 65 oh, inch there. Oh, man. That's so any, awful. I feel like we're like at an auction here. Can anybody beat 65? 65? No, 65. Come on, do we have 70? I've got 115 I'm inch give right a prize here. I'm going to someone that's watching it on an iPhone. <laughs> I think that's where I'm going to go. Oh. Uh, and I'm just trying to read. Uh, Jermaine is saying, can you see that one? Yeah, you can read it. I can't even find it. Oh, happy Mother's Day. No. Nope. Oh, Next one down. There we go. Bonsoir. I don't know. My French pronunciations. I feel like I'm back on cruise in France again. Do you usually book an insurance for the guaranteed flight if you fall sick? Thank you, Jermaine. Got yeah, no Quebec. Okay. From, from Quebec. Uh -huh. Belle Pearl is. Um, I'm just trying to see. An issue with the guaranteed flight if you fall sick. Okay. So I see what she's saying. Do you usually book uh, the type of fare that you could cancel is what it sounds like to me. Right. We usually don't because we have all the other insurances. So if we book it through our Visa or American Express or whatever we use as the travel coverage, then it will kick in if we have a legitimate reason. Like a, a, We can't just say, we're not going on that trip. Give us our money back. It doesn't ever work that way. But if we have to cancel because of an illness or a death in the family or, or yeah. some sort of an emergency, then our travel insurance through our credit card covers it. So yeah. no, we don't usually book it through airlines. Yeah, we usually don't know. No. 
it's easier to deal with our credit card company than an airline in our experience. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's all I know about that one is, yeah, usually we don't just because we have the other coverage. And I guess if you didn't have the other coverage, that would be something to think about. But then you still kind of need insurance for all the different pieces, right? The airline piece would be covered, but then on the cruise wouldn't be covered or, you know, so. So, yeah, so we usually don't book that because it's kind of covered. Right. Now, if you if you have the means to and you want the peace of mind, all this is about peace of mind. Whatever your it comfort is. level is, then buy as much as you can afford and need to to make you feel comfortable. Don't feel like, oh, I don't think I really need that if you've got money in the bank that that was something that was important to you. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. So if you want to book the flights that have the free cancellation, then book them. Cause a lot of times, you know, I was looking at flights the other day and it's, you know, sometimes $50 more, for example, for a seat and you can get something you can cancel. So, so if you're something you're worried about, or there's something that could happen that you're kind of hoping doesn't happen that might, then it's worth paying the extra money. Yeah, for sure. So it depends on everybody's situation for sure. Kelly's next. She's on info. Info. We have learned to use our local insurance broker for travel insurances, health and trip interruption insurances, great service and many policy choices. Yep. So that's what we were saying, you know, sort of what I was trying to lead to when we first started this discussion, depending on where you live, depends on what insurance you need to have also. And so like for Jerry, as, as him being a travel agent, he can get really good in travel insurance for us and anybody that lives in Ontario, but not someone who lives elsewhere in the world. So, you know, that's why we're saying you have to check out your local area for sure. Yeah. Every, every province in, in Canada has different conditions for insurance and who can sell insurance. I don't know if you've noticed before for us Canadians, I always notice that when I'm booking a cruise that has insurance included with it, that you can pay extra for, it'll have a little condition there. A lot of times it says uh, residents of Quebec, that doesn't apply to them. So you can't buy the, sh the cruise insurance. For some reason, there's a condition in Quebec. So they have their own provincial. Plan. So, yeah. So, yeah, you'd be, you'd kind of have to be careful. The, the, the fine print really makes a difference when it comes to insurance, I guess. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, as a as a travel agent in Ontario, I am licensed to sell insurance, and, and my agency deals with Manulife. So I've dealt with them for insurance for friends and family and bookings that I've done. And us, us personally. And like Kelly says, there's lots of different options. They can get one for just traveling inside of Canada. You can get one that for your traveling outside of Canada. You can get one for just students even. There's a student rate one. Okay. There's ones that include full comprehensive COVID and everything that could happen to you is fully covered. You know, some are just the bare bones. If you got hurt, then it covers you. Okay. So yeah, it's kind of like a buffet of insurances if you deal with a private broker or a company that sells dedicated insurance. So. Okay. And it's usually relatively affordable. I guess I'll throw it there. Yeah. Like we have found for family that is, you know, 70 and years of age that it starts to get up into, you know, hundreds of dollars per person for say a week on a cruise is a good number to throw out. Whereas for younger people, you're usually looking at both people combined for under hundred dollars. Now this Canadian dollars, that's Ontario. It's probably gonna be different everywhere. Right. But, but we have found that, you know, definitely as you get older, that unfortunately the insurance goes up. Higher. Even even if you don't have pre-existing yeah. conditions, it's still a challenge. We're just sneezing over there. I don't know if you can hear him or not. <laughs> oh, Stacy. Yes. Oh, you just. Do we just go faster? There, there we she go. is. I work for an American medical insurance company and went out of the country, including cruises. We cover emergency or urgent care services, including oh. ship clinics like we would if you were in the U.S. There you go. So there you go. Yeah. yeah so and and, 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 and that's. Ah! <laughs> Sorry. Bruno was saying hi. <laughs> we need. Doggy insurance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, all, there's so much, so many different options for insurance. And then when we first discussed and we had this topic presented to us as like, oh, do we want to cut? Because there's so much that's different about insurance for every single person, for their needs, where they yeah. live, what kind of trip you're doing. Are you doing days outside of the cruise before? And, the, you know, all these different things play into things. Yeah, we're talking about this tonight because so many people have asked us about it. But when people first started asking us about it, we're like, oh, this isn't a topic that we feel confident in talking about because there's so many variables in it. So, again, we can have this discussion with you guys. You can tell us what you use and what works best. And then and then talk to someone who actually does it for a living is our advice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, we're getting to the point where we're definitely, if someone would have asked us 10, 15 years ago, you know, are you worried about insurance? We're like, no, nah, our, our government and our work's got that covered. But now we're more worried about the details. Yeah. So, and I think I think that's happened ever since the cruise pause and COVID that everybody's been a lot more worried about what happens if I'm sick and stranded somewhere, How who's going to take care of me, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's become more of a conversation ever before, mm -hmm. before all that happened. Mm -hmm. Greg's saying it's 85 in Oregon. 
Mm. Has that cooled off or there's an adjustment of the number? For yeah. me? <laughs> you said 95 earlier, oh, I think. Okay. Bruce and Tony say that they get annual travel insurance with Allegiance. Oh, Alliance. Sorry, Alliance. Alliance. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the name we've heard too. Yeah. So I don't know if you have to be American for that, but we've heard other people talking about that. I'm not sure. But yeah, de definitely a quick Google search that you'd find all the big name companies. Mm -hmm. And I guess the big thing is just find what you need. A lot of them sell like really comprehensive packages. I've never seen any need for us to have those biggest packages. But, you know, somewhere in the middle, you have something that's going to cover your health and your trip if something happens while you're on your trip. Right. Well, you kind of want that. And, uh, Bare minimum health. Yeah. <laughs> that would be my concern. And CAA, Ontario Girl says. So that's yeah. an interesting one right there. Yeah. For eight day trip. And I think we had a family member too that told us that they bought CAA insurance. Someone mm -hmm. recently had told us that you can call CAA. So in, in the US, is, is that AAA? I am not sure. It might it, be, it's yeah. like our auto club, our national auto club. Yeah, and you can buy it through them. You kind of get roads. You get roadside assistance, and plus you can get travel insurance that also works with that. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. And bad news, Craig and Diana, they're they're up in the ante for you. 70, 75 inch in depth. Can you imagine how big your face is on oh, that screen? <laughs> it must look like that big. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dave's saying ninety now. Oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> So Pam has a question. Okay. What credit cards would you recommend for travel insurance? So again, I think that depends on where you're where you're coming from and what your home state or province or country is. Well, we can say what we use, I yeah, guess, because we know absolutely. our excuses. So for years we have used a travel visa, and you can get a visa from all most major, banks. major Canadian banks. And so most of them have a travel visa, and that usually covers your health and your travel and your rental cars and all that when you're away. So we've done that for years. And like I said, very successfully, we've had to have claims put in and we've never had a problem. We've been specifically, if you're Canadian with TD bank uh, for theirs, and I've compared it to some close family members that have a travel card. And it's a little bit different depending on what bank it is. So, and we sort of much prefer uh, the TD one. We, yeah, we've we, stuck with them for quite a few years. And the truth is the TD one, as much as it had the insurance, was a nice option. We also liked it because it was also a travel point system. So Their we point system we, we, we would buy groceries and get extra money we could spend on a cruise, right? Yeah. So for us, that was a good deal. Right. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. And we've recently changed that up. So we yes. now have an American Express. And we decided to get that one because it had all the travel benefits as well. So just because we're traveling as frequently as we yeah. have been the last few years, we thought it was time to to sort of upgrade our credit card into an American Express. It's There's a little bit more fees in that on the onset, but the rewards are better if you travel a lot. lot. Yeah. Not if you're going on one or two trips a year, it's not worth it. Yeah. But if you're traveling as frequently as we're hoping to do in the next year, then it'll be beneficial. So yeah, again, yeah. it's all on your personal. And that's just new to us. So starting the next cruise, the next vlog series, you're going to see us probably hopefully show you a little bit of what how that card works for us when we travel so we'll see but it, it already comes with all the insurance pieces and we've we've put our recent trips on that card so we're hopefully covered <laughs> that's the plan let's so. hope we never have to find out to be honest yeah with you. yeah <laughs> insurance is a funny thing because everybody wants to know about it everybody wants to kind of have it make sure it's there you never want to use it you never want it so it's one of those things you buy but you hope to never use right <laughs> yeah yeah and it's scrolling down here okay uh oh Bruce and Tony are correcting the spelling, the spelling on of it. Yeah, yeah alliance yeah. yeah and I've definitely heard of that I'm not sure if it's yeah. Canadian but I've heard of it in the states for sure yeah and Ontario an example girl, here. we had to cancel because our daughter was in the hospital and we were able to get sorry you scrolled on me able to get half back to cancel for any reason so there that's nice that you had that option for sure I'm yeah. looking for that comment it just disappeared on me over there right there okay there we go oh and then Peter, four inches here in England. iPhone. There, there you go. go. Peter, now Peter's going to get a prize now from you. <laughs> so keep, keep it under four inches. Yeah. Uh, Chad Matthew are saying they think they're overinsured. We use travel card. We buy the cruise line pol policy. It's probably time to read the fine print. Yeah, you might find that you are uh, double oh, insured yeah. if that's the case, if you're doing both. Yeah. Yeah. In saying that, when COVID came was a thing, we were double, we were triple insured on one crew on our first uh, 14 days on new amps, new stun down. We were, we had bought the ship insurance. We had 
booked it on our credit card. We had uh, um, work insurance, a private, a private insurance, private insurance too. Yeah. 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 Dave is saying, just talk to Dan, the man in England, and he'll get you. That's, that's Paul and Carol's travel agent we've talked about a few times. If you're from England. Yeah, and we've never sure. bought anything from Dan for insurance. We're not 100% sure that's accurate, but usually most travel agents also have options to either point you in the right direction to buy insurance or yeah. sell it themselves. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely that's a good starting point is if you're booking a trip already. In fact, in, in Ontario, I'm not sure what it's like elsewhere in the world. In Ontario, it is mandatory that if an Ontario travel agent books a vacation for you, they have to ask you, make you aware of, of insurance and ask you if, and you actually have to do a disclaimer saying i i don't want the insurance or accept the insurance mm -hmm. they want that documented because it's that important to the government of ontario that you people that are traveling have been insured or been offered insurance yeah. right mm -hmm. so so that's one thing that's different in ontario okay flight is booked shelly's asking this is a great question maybe you know the answer to it because i'm not, i don't if the flight is booked through the cruise line and you buy the ship insurance does the ship insurance cover canceled flights so I believe that it's a yes to that because if the if you've booked the flight through the cruise line, then all the onus is on the cruise line to do whatever it takes to fix things for you. So if that means they have to change your flight and cover, if that means they have to fly you to a new city to get on the ship somewhere else, we've had people on trips with us that have had that happen to them. Yes. And, or if it means that you just there's no way to physically get on your cruise, I'm sure that they're going to be reimbursing your cruise and setting you up with something else for another cruise, hopefully in the future. I'm not sure if it would be cash back. That's where it gets squishy okay but yeah so yeah if you're booking that's an advantage of booking the flights through the cruise line if that that puts all the onus on the cruise line to handle that and be responsible for that and that itself comes in kind of like a built-in guarantee mm -hmm. i wouldn't really call it insurance so much as they're going to get anything back necessarily but it would be part of the cruise line's whole policy when you book with them mm -hmm. yeah explore drew can you scroll it up sure we had our flight canceled on our way home March 3rd and just got partial compensation last week. We're still out over $518. I yeah. guess partial is better than nothing. Mm. Yeah. And, wow. and I think, yeah. And we went through right around traveling at, at holidays right after COVID that we had some flights canceled and we had some expenses and we kind of fought back and forth with insurance companies and what was going to be covered and what's going to be covered. A lot of times the airlines will say pay for a hotel if you get canceled want to stay the next day but then try to get that money from the, the airline. That's a challenge. Even if they say it themselves, <laughs> it's it's hard to get that back. So mm -hmm. if you have the insurance as a backup plan, then at least if the airline won't come good with it, then at least you've got that. And, and it, yeah. it'd be nice if the insurance companies fought back with the airline and said, hey, give us this money, but mm -hmm. whatever whatever way it takes for the, the person on the trip to get their coverage is important. But so, yeah, and we have seen a little bit of that here and there that sometimes the coverage isn't 100 percent, especially when you get into canceled flights or having to cancel a trip, you know, that there's a lot of times there's penalties for late cancellation. So that's, you know, a lot of times the insurance company isn't going to cover that unless it's one of those conditions that you're allowed to cancel because of something terrible that's happened in your life unfortunately yeah mm -hmm. ontario girl says at the restart of cruising they could only get manual life insurance because of COVID, and we did get COVID in hawaii had to quarantine in vancouver and insurance covered the whole the hotel stay so yeah. there it worked the way it's supposed to yeah. that's good to hear yeah right yeah for sure and it's interesting because i think we're going to see probably a change in COVID insurance moving forward now that you know with at least in latest statement from the World Health Organization about the status of COVID. I think that's going to probably trigger some changes in health insurance. Don't know for sure, but I'm just, that's just watch for that. So like right now we actually bought insurance for this next cruise coming up that actually has a COVID included clause as well. So, so it is still available, but I'm thinking that'll change with time too. But. Maybe. So, or maybe that. it won't, maybe, but it's, or it'll just yeah, be, I mean, it'll always be with us, right? Yeah. Maybe instead of being COVID insurance, it'll just be that if there's a health condition that causes you to be quarantined, whether it's yeah. that or a flu or something right. that you're going to be covered. Right. So hopefully that's where it migrates to. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That sort of goes to Dave's comment that I'm seeing here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, great. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right. What's Dave say? I can't see it all there. It's right here. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. So, so yeah, so with that statement, because I know that when we were trying to cruise from Canada, that was a big thing as far as what the official statements were from the organizations as the status of COVID and so forth. That that had a, a huge trigger on what we could get covered for, couldn't get covered for from Canada. So, And Greg's watching on a TV. <laughs> <laughs> and Claire is saying she uses BCAA. I'm assuming that... Never, British Columbia? Probably, probably, CAA, probably like a CAA with British Columbia. Yeah, yeah I think that's what that would be, yeah. Yeah. 
and uh, Alfina says that she buys CAA as well. Okay. Yeah, so that, there you go. And, and yeah. she does an annual plan with them. Yeah. So she's saying, where is her comment there? I saw something here. Yeah. Purchase insurance as soon as you pay down your cruise, coverage commences from purchase. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as you make that beginning booking. Yeah. Like I know for sure that's one of, the, one of the trainings that I definitely took when I did the travel agent stuff was that the cancel for any reason insurance, I think it's C-A-F-R is the acronym, it only works if you pay the insurance from the second you book the trip. Right. Then that's the deposit. That's not the final payment. No. And, and that works that way because if you put a deposit down and all of a sudden you decide you want to go on the trip and you're looking for a way to get your money back because you made a bad decision, you know, and you haven't paid for the insurance, it's kind of, they want to know that you're committed up front and you've paid the insurance at that point. That That's an option. You can still get insurance after the fact. If you don't pay for the insurance up front, you just won't be able to get that clause that you can cancel for any reason. You'll still right. get insurance from the time you're traveling and so forth. You just can't have an easier way out of the trip to get your money back. So, mm -hmm. so that's one thing to remember is, yeah, if you're serious about wanting insurance to cover the whole thing, no matter what happens, even if you have to decide not to go, then buy your insurance as soon as you put your deposit down. Claire can't believe something. Can't believe people don't take out insurance <laughs> citing that it's too expensive. If you can't afford the insurance, then you can't afford to travel in the first place. Yeah, for sure. And that's where it's kind of nice with some of the cruise companies, especially if the insurance is comprehensive with the cruise, it can just kind of be like included, kind of like we pay our tips or you pay, pay for the flight or the hotel, but it's just part of, the thing. part of the cost of traveling, right? That's just the piece of the way. That's the way it works, right? If you, you want to be safe, right? Mm -hmm. And Greg's watching on an 85 inch TV. <laughs> what have we started here? Yeah. No. The Venus is good to have insurance. Make sure you leave copies of insurance with someone at home. So that candy. Yeah. Oh, well, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah. Yeah, I never thought of that. That's a good idea because we should be doing that. You yeah. always leave that emergency contact, right? And you hope that they never have to be called. Yeah. But if they do, it'd be nice if they had an insurance plan in their hand. That's yeah. a really good suggestion. And maybe they call the insurance company saying, and my parents, you know, something happened to them when they were like parasailing and now you're, you're going to have to. And they're going to say, but you're parasailing, <laughs> so, so your insurance is void. I did read that today. Yeah, I, I read I exactly. Know. I think it was Kelly that told us that. <laughs> I was, I was reading the, the fine print on one of the insurance policies today and I saw that parasailing, actually a lot of stuff there, like scuba diving. Yeah. Like a lot of things we do on cruises doesn't get covered in your insurance. So, yeah, I think scuba diving, you have to be licensed scuba diver and all of that sort of thing. I guess well, like, a parasailing is one that we know you're not, you're not covered. Hmm. Steve says he's 42 years working for United Airlines and knows that airlines do not give up money easy. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> True enough. Now, in, in saying that, I do, even though they, they don't give money, <laughs> they don't give money up easily. I found they, they got really good at giving credits. I've had really good luck with giving credits from airlines, just not actual money back. I feel at least I'm going to get something for what I put out, you know? Right. So that's not a bad thing. Hmm. Did you see Dave's comment? Yeah. He is, says he's watching a 101 inch TV. Yeah, as if <laughs> people don't have TVs that big, do they? I don't know. No. <laughs> well, we, have a, we have a projector TV that's 114 inches that I watch the Masters on. So, uh -huh. is so that that, big? yeah, really? that's I how big it is. Yeah, I measured it with the tape measure there during the golf game. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyways, um, the, I think that's all the comments we have there for the insurance. Right? Yeah. So, so we can keep talking about insurance. Yeah. I was just going to say, <laughs> I mean, the, the reality is we, we just hope we don't have to use it. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So, so the bottom line, when we, we wrap all this up of what we've said about insurance is that yes, you should get it. It's, it's a, it's the cost of cruising. It's the cost of traveling in general, not just cruising. Yeah. And definitely, as you age, you need it more, but anything can happen to you. You can be 25 and have an accident on the boat as easily as if you're 55. Mm -hmm. So as much as we feel we're invincible, it's still good for people that are young. And then uh, we uh, we also, you know, there's many different options, but be careful to read the details of all your different options because some cover some things and some don't cover others. Mm -hmm. And if and doubt, talk to a professional. They're going to help you get exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and just be careful, like Chad Matthew said, you know, be careful on the upsell where you end up buying so much insurance that you got multiples of insurance that you really don't need and you're paying extra for stuff you don't need as well. So Right. It's yeah. nice to be prepared, but we all don't want to waste money either. So we're trying to figure out the right deal. Mm -hmm. So it really, it really is a personal issue, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So, yeah. 
So yeah, again, we hope to never ever have to call that number on the insurance policy. That is our goal from now to the time that we can't travel anymore is never call that number. So, <laughs> but it is nice to know that it is there. It's and if there. you need to do it, you know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And like I said, as we go on Morella, I think we're going to be able to show you something a little bit different as far as what that goes with insurance and how it all works with traveling on cruises from outside of North America. That it seems to be a bigger push for sure. So, yeah. So I just seen what other comments here. Chad Matthew said something else. One thing we always check for is medical evacuation coverage. Hmm. That could be a disaster or sorry, a devastating expense if needed for sure. Yeah, exactly. And, and that is one of the ones I know for sure that most cruise line policies do cover is that if a helicopter need to take you off the ship and some has been on cruises and that's happened and take you off somewhere, then you you want to be covered for that because that's an expensive yeah. ride. You yeah. need to have a high, high uh, coverage limit actually. And so that going back to the uh, credit card one, that was, one of the things that we really liked with the new credit card that we just got was that that number that they had for that we thought was a very high number of coverage for that sort of situation mm -hmm. so, so for sure esther's checking in late saying hello happy mother's day hello esther dave is saying that uh, wonderful vlogs and wonderful people oh thank you <laughs> andrew is asking when you're going to alaska july so we're hoping i won't need a, a a puffer coat. What do you call it? Why I can't think of the name of it. I am determined to cruise without taking any type of winter gear ever. Ah, really? So, so I, you're not going to bring any mitts or nope. gloves or anything nope. when we're in Alaska nope. or anything? Nope, nothing like that. Nope. So here's what I'll say. Quite a few years ago now, was it six years ago maybe, when we went to Newfoundland for Canada Day, which is July 1st for Americans, um, we flew into Newfoundland Canada Day, and it was nice walking around town, a nice pleasant temperature, warm, you know, walk around in t-shirts and capris even. But when you get out on the water, and we went on a whale watching tour, everybody was bundled up in their coats, and I pulled out mitts out of my purse, and people started to laugh, and by halfway through the thing, everybody was asking to borrow my mitts, because it was that cold you needed them. So I think it's better to be prepared. <laughs> I'll probably have like a windbreaker raincoat type of thingamajig that I had in Europe, but, mm. but no mitts or tubes or nothing like that. I'm going to have to bring some for them, them, right guys? No, nope. I can go Maybe blow, blow snow in the driveway at minus 20 and wind chill minus 30 in my shorts. I'm good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so question here or oh, Bruce and Tony are saying coverage yeah amounts are important because yeah especially yeah. with the evac stuff that's really expensive sure. and I'm gonna ask them for vlogging our first boat trip fishing how are you gonna do that that's on your boat that we showed our, earlier us fishing on yeah. our personal boat first boat well we don't fish on it <laughs> <laughs> We have family we've, that fish on we've it. We've had that boat how many years now? And I have yet to have cast a line. Does that sound bad to everybody? We don't even um, have fishing poles on the boat. No, no, we don't. But we do have friends that have come and fished off of it yeah. unsuccessfully. And then when we docked it back at the dock, they went to the end of the dock and they got a really big fish. Yeah. So after we had taken them all around in the Great Lakes trying to find fishing spots for the day. Yeah, we, we the place where you would put fishing gear, we've got it stocked full of Crown Royal. And, <laughs> yeah, so we've made better use of the space. <laughs> We're not fisher. Yeah, fisher people. That, that's when we are out and about our boat, <laughs> as Dave is saying. Mm -hmm. Drew saying, have a great time in Alaska. They love Alaska. Mm -hmm. We're hearing wonderful things. And hey, has anybody taken the train in Skagway? Oh, stop. Someone thinks She's she doesn't. trying to convince me I need to do this. <laughs> but we already booked a whale watching tour for that day. So we can't do both. Maybe yeah. we'll try and do both. You think? Yeah. Athena says she cruised Alaska in June and did not need a coat or a jacket. Oh, I hope you're right. I hope I don't have to use a coat or a jacket. That would make me very happy. B says this has been informative. Hopefully, because, yeah, it was a very long kind of... Long winded? Convoluted kind of... Because <laughs> the insurance is so complicated that we can't possibly cover it in an hour, but we tried. <laughs> uh -huh. Wait, doesn't Jill do your packing? Uh. So this is the implication that I don't have a choice. I'm going to get a two permits whether I like it or not. <laughs> no way. There's no two permits, people. I do do all of the packing, guys. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Ontario Girl is saying, great weather Alaska last September. Most of the time, fleece and raincoat okay. Mm -hmm. your baby needed a puffer coat. Yeah, puffer uh, coat. That was the word I was looking for. What's that? That's like the Seinfeld jacket? No. No? The yeah. Like the ones that can go into that little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, coming on the train, coming in. Okay. Chad Matthew, amazing is the train, is what they oh, say. Oh, the train is amazing. <laughs> Look at that in bold. 
big yeah. uppercase. Dirt mm. bag left us, swam in the pool and during Glacier Bay. That's probably what we'll be doing. Yeah. Swam in the ass pool. Maybe. Peter says he figures that my hair must be insured. Well, it, do it doesn't cost a lot because there's only a few to insure. That's the only thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> whale watching over train tip for sure. So, you got someone on your side now. Yeah. Thanks, Shelly. <laughs> yeah. Well, Interior Girl says the train was okay. We stopped halfway and did hike back, then train back again. Uh, so, yeah. No, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Everybody tells me I have to do the train, so I don't know. But yeah. like I said, we already booked it whale watching yeah. tour for that. Dave wants to know when you're cruising with Paul and Carol next. Mm. Mm. We're not allowed to tell you. <laughs> we are cruising with them again. So the news is plans, out. Plans are in the process for <laughs> yeah, that. So uh, they, they when they're ready to announce, we'll let you know. I think we're going to join them on one of their lives, and we're going to announce that we're cruising with them and get that all figured out. We're just trying to line that up with them because they're going on a Amarillo cruise the same time we are, but a different one. So it's not that one. They're going on, <laughs> on the new one, the in, new one in Europe while we're going on one in North America. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah but, yeah, that announcement is coming soon, Dave. So we will be back with Paul and Carol. And Athena's saying train for sure. This has a boat for the train. And Lisa did the white paid pass train in Skagway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Enjoyed it. Yeah. Kathy says take a raincoat. Yes. That's what I was thinking. I need a raincoat and a puffer jacket, but maybe I just need a raincoat. Dave says parasailing when? Well, I'm wearing my puffer jacket over Glacier Bay. Well, maybe in Florida, <laughs> and then you're still in the U.S. And hanging off, might hanging off the back of the train, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly says, "Bring a hot toddy and a thermos." <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and train was the best. D says, "Train, good." Yeah, yeah. I'm just reading <laughs> Kelly's comment saying, "Take the train and stay at Segway. You can watch the whales off of your cruise ship." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And James and Kimmy Cat get the final comment saying thanks for the travel insurance info and thank you. So we're all just over the hour. So all we'll right. call it there. We've got some hopefully some work to get some videos out this week to you because we've been falling behind on that. But that's yeah. the plan this week and maybe some suitcase diaries, stories of other people cruising. And if you've been on a cruise lately, get a hold of us. And uh, it's just Jill and Jerry at cruisingconnects.ca or go to our website and you'll find it. And uh, thank you everybody for the discussion. We've been here to learn from you and hopefully you've yes. learned a little bit from all of us so i really like how phoenix um note to give a copy of our insurance papers to our emergency our contact. contact we're yep. going to start doing that yep. thanks so thank you everybody and uh, have a good week and we will be back next sunday it's a long weekend here in canada and i believe the u.s so let's do it next sunday night we'll we, we can stay Sunday. up all night long oh we yeah don't, we don't have to go to work the next <laughs> we day we don't have to go to work the next day <laughs> bye everybody good night <laughs>